Let's bring in um, James McGregor, who chairs APCO Worldwide's Greater China Region, has written extensively on the Chinese uh, economy. And uh, I think, uh, Mr. McGregor, and, uh, just to, to maybe summarize, maybe and lose some of the color of what you're trying to say, but it, when I look at the notes, you're expecting the, the president to be able to eventually announce that he has got a great deal. And at the same time, President Xi will announce that we stood up to, to the, the bullying from the Americans, and this is what, what comes out of it, and it will be half measures. Is that what, is that what you're expecting? Well, both sides have to climb down because this has gotten ratcheted up so high, and they're both feeling it politically, and both economies are feeling it. So if we can do a deal that just brings down the boil, uh, you know, China buys more goods, uh, maybe they drop a little bit on the technology restrictions and just to bring it down to then have more talks going forward because right now we're kind of frozen. I mean, the U.S. ask is China change your system. That's not going to happen. You know, we have to worry about protecting our own system. So we just need to bring it down for a while and then have change the conversation to a, a different a different a different way of looking at things. And in my view, that should be we should have reciprocity talks where we say, OK, it's no longer the equation of um, a rich America, poor China uh, that we had under Deng Xiaoping. We need the conversation to change now that we are we're both equal. We're competing. And if you can't if we can't do it in China, you can't do it here um, and get more on an equal basis. And then both leaders can can trumpet that as they've they've, they've you know, made big breakthroughs. Yeah, that's that's the issue, I guess, is I guess the point you're making is that China has done well and it's almost systemic, some of these practices, and they're, they're unlikely to change. The only question I have is, is whether President Trump, in, in, now that he's taken it this far, I don't know if he would have risked all this. And I, I think there is a risk to, to, his, to him pursuing this to the economy and to his reelection and everything else. And I think he's serious about holding China accountable, and I think he has some hawks in his ear. And, and I, I'm just wondering if you have that right, that he's going to be willing to take sort of a, a very weak deal and pretend that it's a very strong deal, or whether he'll have people saying you can't do that, because he, he responds to things like that. If you call it a weak deal, that could push him into a much tougher bargaining position with China. Well, that's why I'm, I'm talking about having Intra a... You know, having a midterm deal and then changing the conversation to a reciprocity talks, because that also allows Xi Jinping to climb down. You know, it's not, it's not easy. Look, the business community appreciates this president pushing back on China, but the strategy's been all over the map, and China doesn't know which tweet it is negotiating with. So we need to bring this more into a, you know, we need, we, we need a path forward because, look, the business community, um, the American business community, when they've got $550 billion in sales in China, American companies and their affiliates. You know, they, they need the China market. Our chip companies have as much as two-thirds of their output goes to China. So they can't be cut off unless the government wants to give them subsidies way beyond what they're giving the farmers. So it's got to be worked out for the business community. No matter what Trump feels himself, he has to worry about the business community and the stock market. I just don't know if it's fair to say that they don't know what he wants because it's their one, Trump, their one tweet away from, from not knowing. They know exactly what Bob Lighthizer wants them to do. They knew exactly what they had signed on to do in, in April. And, and reneged on, on all those different. So it's really a question of whether they, what you said, whether they are willing to, to fundamentally change the relationship, which is no longer rich America, poor China, help us bring you know a, a, over a billion people into into the middle class. Now it's it's you know, it's the D. We had you know, Steve Bannon on yesterday, and I know he's kind of a lightning rod, but he says it's about the deindustrialization of the United States, and that we'll be talking about this years to come in the future on how we handle this relationship with China? My view is we need to do three things. We need to protect ourselves. We need strong export controls on technology that matters. We need to be very careful on allowing Chinese mergers and acquisitions and investments. Uh, we also need to open up our, our doors to talent. We need to give PhDs in the hard sciences, uh, staple a green card to their diplomas. 
We need to, uh, we need to invest in our own R&D, um, our own science and technology education. We need, to, we need to fix ourselves, if you, because we've got to compete against China. I don't think they're going to change, so we've got to figure out how we compete against the structure that China is, and we can do that. And the final thing is we've got to work with our allies. Dropping out of TPP, I think, was the worst decision we've made since invading Iraq. Uh, that, that would have incentivized China to change because you had 40 percent of GDP, uh, a, a trade regime they were not in, um, and China would have had to compete. And I, I think TTIP between the U.S. and Europe would have also been a good agreement. We need to fix ourselves, and then, then China's going to have a hard time. But if we keep trying to push China to change, I, I've been there 30 years. Their system is what it is. It doesn't mean that, that um, <laughs> you know, we, we can't change, you know, organized crime has had a system for 30 years. We can't get them to change. Well, that, that's unacceptable. And, and, you know, I don't, I know we always, uh, we can always find fault with ourselves, but I'm not sure really that's the, I, I know we need more PhDs. We, we do have great technology. We just don't want people stealing stuff that we've developed and with, with no recompense. So I, you know. I, 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 complete, I completely agree with all of that. Okay. But you, you got to remember the power of China. This is a very powerful economy and a very powerful country right now. And I don't know if we can, you know, make them go on bended knee because we're so powerful. We have to compete. We got to take care of ourselves. And they'll change because of if we exert our power and we, you know, we do what we're capable of here. Oh. Hope Springs Eternal. Uh, James McGregor, thank you. Appreciate okay. it. You look great with that. Uh, I, I, that's a great shot with it in, in, in the with dark, capital? with the capital and everything else. Yeah. Yep.